another interview in our series with candidates who have contested races in the May 15th primary. And I have uh, Joe Burney, who is running against uh, Sid Lichen, uh for Springfield, uh, our county Springfield commissioner, position number two. Lane County Commissioner from District 2 Springfield, Dist correct. <laughs> Better way to put it. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start out with the sta standard question, who are you and where are you coming from? Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for books of theology. Um, I'm Joe Burney. Um, I'm Oregonian by birth. I'm Oregonian by choice in that my father lost his, his job at Weyerhaeuser um, when I was all of four years old and they moved south and I was raised um, where he could find work mm -hmm. and, uh, and moved back here with my family 27 years ago. That's who I am. Um, my father, uh, I grew up in, in this province 64 years ago outside of Portland called mm -hmm. Beaverton. Yep. It was this rural area then. Um, Tectonic special, or central. It, well, not then. Yeah. And, and, um, and in a home that my dad built, I thought it was a castle. I have looked at it recently. It's not quite 1,200 square feet. <laughs> uh, and, and that's where I'm from. And, and, um, I have held multiple positions. Um, I, I uh, taught high school. I'm a tenured high school instructor. Mm -hmm. The last time I taught high school was a mere 40 years ago. And any, what subject? Um, social studies, government, history, okay. all of those things. Um, and in fact, made enough of an impression that my students, uh, 12 of them have from 40 years ago, have contributed <laughs> to my campaign. One of them, who's a retired battalion chief yeah. in the Bay Area, drove up to um, canvas for me last weekend, which was just delightful. Mm. Um, and anyway, I've done that. I have a, an extensive background in several areas so let me just you know so if yeah. I'm applying for this job here's my qualifications it sounds that's, like that's, that's the that's kind what of what we're doing um, education um, tenured high school teacher adjunct professor of education at the University of Oregon um, 26 years ago right here in the 4J school district with Margaret Nichols and with Springfield's Paul Plath mm -hmm. Um, members of the business community, including John Lively and Gary Pierpoint, who's no longer with us. John is, Gary's not. Mm -hmm. um, created something uh, called Networking for Youth, which created literally um, several millions of dollars of programs for young people, helping them transition to work mm -hmm. and providing mentors for them. And, and that, back then, 26 years ago here in the county, was critical. Because even to this day, 80 to 85 percent of the first jobs that young people get, no matter how good or bad their school or training or other experiences, is through knowing some caring adult that opens a door and connects them to an opportunity. Right. That adult might be a teacher, a counselor, a coach, a parent, a pastor, an uncle, but some adult made that effort. Yeah. And so... Um, we trained hundreds upon hundreds of working women and men in Lane County um, to do that, to, to put the young person's interests at the center, to connect them to working adults, friends of theirs, mm -hmm. so that these kids that, that in many times didn't have adults in their life who could connect them could. Did that in Lane County. Um, we're talking education now. Um, have been on the Lane Education Service District Board mm -hmm. of Education for about 12 years. For a while, was on the Oregon School Board Association Legislative Task Force. Um, I've done a lot of stuff in education. That's education. Um, workforce training. Mm -hmm. Workforce training, my qualifications. Um, I developed, secured about $14 million and developed new, this is back in the late 80s, by the mm -hmm. way, new apprentice and journey level curriculum so that the building trades could be ready for the new technologies back then that were allowing them to bid jobs. Yeah. So take electrical workers, for example, IBEW. We put in new, new classes back then called programmable controls, traffic 
signal and controls. Where, where were the classes held? It, what are called JATCs, which are Joint Apprenticeship Training Centers okay. that every one of the building trades has. Yeah. Um, and traffic signal control, smart house technology, so they could bid the jobs back yeah. then. So that's where, by the way, I have a long history mm -hmm. with the building trades, and, and that's where it emanates from. Because yeah. um, this room actually used to be a wood shop. Yes, I'm aware of that. And, <laughs> and the fact, you know, at one level, it, the fact that we're in here recording this program and other programs like it um, is for us a good thing, but I, I think the fact that it was converted or it was lost is quite the travesty. I mean, industrial arts has vanished from high schools. Well, absolutely. Let me take it a couple of steps further. Yeah. We're getting off the track of where I was trying to answer your question. We can get back on yeah, it. Yeah, right? we will, but... Okay, uh, let, yeah. me, let me speak to that. Um, one of the things that I've done is I created, you know, before I moved back home to Oregon, mm -hmm. like I said, 27 years ago, I was pretty involved in education in California. Mm -hmm. And I was one of three architects of that state's first statewide dropout prevention policy mm -hmm. and the fiscal appropriation that was necessary for it. Okay. And that entire thing was organized around two key principles. One was back then what we called vocational education. Yep. Vocational and career, right? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned industrial arts. And the, and the other component, key component, was that having teachers have equal encouragement for all students because 30 years ago teacher expectations of how different groups of students would perform in fact lent themselves to self-fulfilling prophecies and decreased options for a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean I think that hands-on practical applications preparing uh, young people for work is critical. I'd go mm -hmm. further. Yeah. I would say that public schools and this is what we organized here in Lane County and in Springfield and Eugene 25 years ago, that public schools represent the greatest potential human resource development agency in every community and the, develop, right? and the development of right. our human resource base ought to match where jobs are and where they're projected to be. But a lot of stuff actually, um, even at the elementary level, you still have a huge impact on the kids sort of attitude toward life. Of course. So, but continue on and then nah. I'll, I'll make a couple <laughs> of notes and then we'll come back to some of these topics. That's great. Yeah. Um, but what you said is is 100% right and and think of everything in terms of um, yeah. three fundamental things that we want to give. I mean, I'm a I'm a grandparent and a parent. Three fundamental things. How many things, kids? How many grandkids? Uh, three kids, two grandkids. Two grandkids. That's okay. Right. But, but the, the, the fundamental thing that we need to give our young people, I think, is a work ethic, yeah. a service ethic, and a citizenship ethic. And we can come to that and dig as deep as you'd like. But um, going on, so, so, so workforce training, I was the founding executive director of the Lane County Regional Workforce Quality Committee, which was a okay. precursor to what are now called workforce investment boards. Mm -hmm. um, and in that role, we generated $8 million that otherwise would not have come to Lane County. Mm -hmm. Half of it, uh, we contracted to Lane Community College, which ran displaced timber worker retraining programs. Mm -hmm. And this campaign has been lovely for me because I've come in contact with two people that went through that and had their lives transformed as a result of that. So that's very gratifying mm -hmm. for me. And the other half of the money, another $4 million, went to the first ever school to work investments and structure for Lane County. Mm -hmm. So in terms of workforce training, I have that experience. Um, before that, um, with a whole other story that we can get into, if you'd like, yeah. I created uh, with seven frozen fruit and vegetable processors. I was one of the owners of one of those plants mm -hmm. then. And the Teamsters and the United Farm Workers, two groups that did not get along, uh, the first ever migrant farm worker training center in the United States. So I have an extensive workforce training background. Mm -hmm. Business. Okay. <laughs> um, 
I have owned several businesses. My last business, which was successful enough to enable me to retire, uh, was a clean uh, was a construction uh, development and finance company. But our niche was uh, energy efficiency retrofits, solar projects, mm -hmm. energy storage, microgrids, and seismic retrofits. Okay. So that's what we did. Um, so the last six and a half years, up to a year ago when, when I retired, we closed 100 and, over 120 million of those jobs, but that wasn't the big deal. That was a big deal for me, it's enabled me to retire, but yeah. that wasn't the significant thing we were doing. Mm -hmm. The significant thing we were doing was we were breaking into one of the largest and most visible energy markets in the United States, which was Los Angeles and Southern California, even though I was living here, yeah. everyone that worked for me had to live down there. And, um, and we, were, we were penetrating new markets for clean energy. Yeah. One of the projects, example, uh, the largest net zero plus facility in the United States. It's a 144,000 square foot electrical training center. It produces more clean energy than it uses we were going to sell the surplus to the utility, but the utility business model is buy high, buy low, sell high. Yeah. So we thought, well, why? Let's store it. And electricians need to be trained in installing energy storage battery systems anyway. Mm -hmm. So we, we store the extra energy. In the several years that this project was going on, we only, the storage technologies increased so much that it, they took up one tenth the space to store all the energy that it would have, you know, three years earlier. Um, and as a result of that, we store over 160 days worth of emergency power, and this training center has become one of the primary emergency evacuation centers for, for the county of Los Angeles. All that stuff can be brought to Lane County, but, but mm -hmm. the other piece that I really want to explain, if I may, Am I talking too much? Uh, well, no, this is good. And this is my got, life. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, like I say, I'll take some notes and we'll come back and, good. and, and key on some of the things you've said. Okay. Um, with my business and the $120 million in closed projects, mm -hmm. um, we insisted on prevailing wages. Mm -hmm. we, we insisted that all employees uh, have fair and flexible scheduling have health and retirement benefits. We had community hire agreements in the communities our projects were in. Over half of all the people working had to come from that community. We yeah. monitored it by zip code. Mm -hmm. we, um, we've targeted populations that oftentimes have been excluded from full workforce participation, women, minorities, veterans. Mm -hmm. um, and we put in place, and this gets back to your school to work stuff, we put in place uh, for every young person 18 and older that wanted to have a career in one of the building trades, very speedy entry into registered pre-apprenticeship training. And they had jobs waiting for them at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. So anyway, business. Um, I know what it's like to run a successful business. I've done that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more than you wanted. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good, uh, good stuff. Okay, so... Um, so we got a sense of why you're running, and so what... No, no you haven't heard why I'm running. I haven't, haven't yet, okay. But so I'm, I'm ahead, running to make ahead. all the things that I, we've talked about happen in Lane County, yeah. and, and specifically in Springfield. I, I think that yeah. was implied by the conversation. Yes, sir, okay. <laughs> so, um, and I guess to some extent you've answered the question of what uh, what are some of the issues that you think are important for for the county? To some extent, may I elaborate? Go for it. Um, I think that from what I've seen, again, running, I'm 64, mm -hmm. I've not run for political office, politics is nothing I've aspired to, why am I doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I initially entered exploring candidacy so that perhaps some young people might run because I don't believe that in this day and age, in a democracy, incumbents should not go, should, should not, they shouldn't be unchallenged. I right. mean, even for the discussion and the debate and there's getting way people too, engaged. There's way too many um, uncontested races. Correct. Um, locally in the state, 
uh, going through the list of candidates, it was just it's disgusting. Well, this, this race would have been another had I not entered yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So I entered it. Um, I wanted to model for my children, my grandchildren, and, and the area sort of a high-integrity, issues-oriented campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I really think we need more of that. So issues. Um, what engages people? What engages people is having the ability to feel empowered and develop initiatives and develop projects that can impact their life. Mm -hmm. We have a, board, a, a county board of commissioners that s tends to put obstacles in the way of citizen initiatives. Oh, yeah. And in fact, tends to um, have... I, I would say it's more than tends to. Well, I'm being gentle. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, maybe in this situation, a, a little bit of a hammer action would well, be... Well, here's the... Ha I don't need hammer <laughs> action. I can tell you what I do. Yeah. What I would do um, is... What I will do is, uh, first day, if we have the votes, I will direct county's legal staff not to be obstacles, but when we hear that citizens are developing initiatives, all they want to do is to have all of us vote on whether we want something or not. Yeah. You, you don't stymie that in a democracy. I would, I would uh, direct legal staff to work with them, make mm -hmm. sure from the get-go the initiative is structured correctly so this non-issue issue doesn't exist before our people uh, waste their time, which is as valuable as any commissioner's time, yeah. getting 15,000 signatures, we already know that the, the initiative is structured correctly and, and let them go to work on it. So that's one, is a more, um, what do you call that, a more open, um, cooperative. inclusive, cooperative county government. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. And a more, and, and not the behind closed doors crap that goes yeah. on. Um, that's one. Another one is economic development. Okay. Even the people on the commission that say they understand economic development don't. I've done economic development all my life starting in the Carter administration okay. um, where I assisted 42 e community development corporations in ghettos, barrios, and reservations across the country with their local economic development shopping center financing, getting curbs and gutters and infrastructure into some of the communities, low income and affordable housing development, mm -hmm. done all that. Um, and in this day and age, it's pretty much demonstrated time and time again, that you don't really generate a stronger local economy by giving away the farm to large multinational corporate structures that come in, suck up the incentives and often leave. And we can Look at Symantec in our own backyard. Hynix. Hynix, Sony, I mean, you name them. So, with the, the tools at our disposal, I would want a more moderate approach. Yeah. Yes, we will get some whales that come in, and I will be bringing one in because of the work I have done and the relationships I have. But those tools also have to be directed towards entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. towards retaining and expanding our small community businesses, mm -hmm. to opening up markets for the products and services of local business. I'm a real believer in Main Street, not just Wall Street. Yeah. Fundamental difference. I could go on and on, I mean, yeah. if you like. Well, I, th I think we've probably got enough to work with. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. we're about a third of the way in. Okay. And uh, so it sounds like you have something you wanted to add. Yeah. Go, ahead, go for it. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that this is Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. I believe, and, and the county commissioner is a, a nonpartisan office. In theory. I believe, yeah, yeah. I believe, but in fact, I think that you've got people that don't know what to do in the new economy. They don't know how to move money towards the right areas. Mm -hmm. So they tend to default into making everything a political issue as opposed to solving a problem. And uh, in my opinion, uh, I have specific, I know how to do that. I mean, I, all my life, I have moved money in successful ventures that have also been attendant to social issues. It's not rocket science, uh, and it's not political. So whether it comes to county budget, economic development, how the county um, pools and invests its, its 
dollars in investments, mm -hmm. where those investments go, what they yield, what they don't do for the county, um, I'm, I'm prepared to get exceedingly specific. Okay. Um, so let's just start at the top of the list. Um, you talk, uh, we, we talked briefly about industrial arts, mm -hmm. okay, which is sadly out of the school systems. It's and, terrible. And I, I have some feelings about how it got booted out of it. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> but let's, but let's, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But let's, let's, uh, let's look. No, what are your what? I'd, I'd love to hear them. Well, um, a lot of people are not going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. Um, and I, I will give the standard disclaimer, okay? I've been sort of a lifelong leftist, but I see a lot of the stuff that's coming from the left, um, particularly recently, as somewhat destructive. But how, well, you said you okay. saw how industrial, why industrial arts left. One of the things was... I'm the interviewer now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, one of the things that I sort of observed was the feminization of education. Okay. And in particular, the view that... Um, girls are having problems, we need to support girls, but boys are benefiting from industrial arts, so what we need to do is to cancel industrial arts well, to remove the benefit from the boys. So the, everyone watching this, check yeah. this out, we disagree. <laughs> well, that's, that's fine, but I think that that's, but that's, that's the observation that I made yeah. as these things began to disappear. Well, I, I've, I've been we're around. Talking, we're talking decades ago when this, this, this has been here since 1982. Yes, I've been working in this district yeah. since 1992. Um, let me suggest okay. that there, there are good reasons why the public has not generated dollars that have supported mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff, combined with what I think was a real hoax that was yeah. pulled over us, where every kid was prepared to go to college. Yes. The whole curriculum yes. was organized around college yeah. entrance. Now, I'm, if yeah. I may. Go ahead. So when you do that, it justifies eliminating the kinds of electives that kept so many young women and men in high school, from vocational training to drama and, and you know, to the art, yeah, to all of There's drama here. There's, there's a lot yeah. of drama here. <laughs> yeah, there is. But that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about, so I don't think it's a male-female thing at all. I think it's it's a the, the hoax that everybody has to go to college, yes. and and as a result, there's all these incredibly well-paying and meaningful careers that kids aren't prepared for, and we have a mismatch. And oh, yeah, now yeah. we're trying to get back into again a more moderate and balanced approach, and bring in this stuff back for young people. I don't 100 percent agree with what I've heard is how the state is thinking about doing that, but that's not what I'm running for. Mm -hmm. I'm running for county commissioner. Right. Well, the county commission does have some say over a big chunk of education funds in terms of the budget. So you ultimately no, do get the vote on that. That's not correct. It's not. No. The county assessor collects money and special right. districts receive the money, but the county doesn't tell the Lane ESD or different school districts how to use their money. Here's what the county can do. The county can um, generate, d provide seed funding, and generate, provide leadership, and work mm -hmm. with school districts and convene them around many more realistic things, like mentoring yes. like, for, okay. for young people. But, but anyway, I'm sorry, I'm not here to debate let's go, you. Let's go back to, because yeah. um, combining these particular things, the equal encouragement, mm -hmm. okay, all the kids are going to go to college. That's not equal encouragement. Equal encouragement means that a young person can, can succeed in whatever area of life they would like to, and, and, and encouraging them to do that. Doesn't, equal encouragement doesn't mean you're encouraging everyone to have the same goal in well, life. Well, first of all, I'm not sure that that's true. That's okay, that's, I, but I'm running, and I believe that's true, and I think I have a lot more experience okay. in this area. So there are, there are people, for example, take, take a really obvious case, who may love basketball, Okay. My son, by the way, was but, the Oregon 2008 4A Basketball Player of the Year. <laughs> I just yeah. had to mention that. That's fine. Yeah. No, but it's there's, a lot, fine. there's a lot of five foot two people who are never going to make it to the NBA. 
Well, okay. there's a lot of six foot eight people that are never going to make it to the NBA. That's true, but there are more five foot two people who are not going to make it than six foot eight people. That's because there are more five foot two people. Period. Um, <laughs> But if we take it as a ratio dividing I'm the number sorry, of people that are tall versus the number of people that are short, the percentage I don't, chance of getting in, because these numbers should always be a ratio. Show me the data. Okay. Um, I, I don't know that there's, any, there's only a couple players in, in there that are, are in the high five feet. I'm sorry. Make your point. I, I apologize. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think the data is pretty clear on that, that you're not going to be in the NBA if you're 5'6 um, or under. Unless What's your point? <laughs> my, my point being that equal encouragement, you know, not everybody can do everything. I'm not here to argue equal yeah. encouragement with you. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, when you asked what I've done, right. that I did that in the 80s, and that was one of the principles of that particular dropout prevention policy. That's all I was saying. Right. So I'm looking at what's going on today. I mean, currently, um, boys are dropping out at a much higher rate in schools than girls are. Is, is that a, a statistic that you accept, or do well, we have you to? Know, here's get what I don't, if I may. This is not one of the main issues that the county commissioner yeah, okay. has a lot of input on. So if we could talk about those issues, that would be great. Okay. Uh, I would I would say on dropout that that or what is Oregon something like the second highest? Yeah, it's number forty-eight. Is, okay. so, is so the third in terms highest, of graduation rate. Yes, that is abominable. Yes, it is. And and that to the degree the county can look at budget ways to support realistic ways to change that, and mm -hmm. I think mentoring is one for, with working adults. I'm all for, but honestly, those aren't. That this is not one of the main issues the county weighs in on. Although I will tell you this, okay. the teachers union of Springfield, the Springfield Education Association, right. and the Eugene Education Association, they they historically do not weigh in on county commissioner elections because there is not a big education component to it. But they have on this one, and they endorse me. Okay, um, that's good. So I guess you're saying that we shouldn't discuss this particular thing well, or, it, or, the not forces the that are, or the forces that are driving it. Okay? We can talk about anything you want, right. but the county budget doesn't impact education directly other than collect taxes and distribute them to, school, to special districts. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I guess on that argument, then a lot of that experience is probably not relevant that you talked about okay but I would disagree with that okay so um, my sense is that um, the pendulum may have swung a little bit on the far side that I currently yeah. university <laughs> enrollment is about 60 40 nationally uh, female to male that dropout rates and suicide rates of young men is far higher by a lot than than for young women. So not to say that young women should not be encouraged to do things, but I think that there is a continuing ongoing effort to encourage girls to do this and that where it's not present for boys. Not disagreeing your Good. opinion. <laughs> okay. So I do I do like what you talked about on this concept of work service and citizenship ethic. Um, it's the concept of responsibility um, and largely versus the concept of being a victim, mm -hmm. which I think is playing enormously um, in the politics today, you know, about these victim classes that need, um, uh, that need to have their behavior overlooked. In other words, um, that maybe some of the victim stuff is, is the consequences of choices being made. So we'll move on from there. Um, so I think that there's there's some items around that. Okay. Um, you talk about there are, but I would like to say something go rather ahead, than go just for it. hear go this. For it. Yeah. Go for it. I believe everybody, everyone, mm -hmm. needs a sense of meaning in their life. Agreed. And purpose in their life, mm -hmm. a sense of being a part of a group, a sense of competence, mm -hmm. a, a feeling of security and the sense that if they work hard 
hope. If they work hard, they can create a better life for themselves. Yeah. I think for me, that's the point. So why is that not happening for a lot of the boys who are dropping out? I can't answer your, your question. I can say for a lot of young men and women, school is increasingly irrelevant. Yes. Um, I can, even for some of the students that pull down good grades. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's, that's, not, that, that's not the issue I'm running on, but that's okay. my response to you. Okay. Um, so you did mention retraining and school to work, mm -hmm. um, which I think is essentially going back to what existed before when I grew up in the, in the I was educated predominantly through the decade of the 1960s when we did have When did you graduate from high school? Uh, 1971. Me too. We're the same age. So. <laughs> yes, you, you indicated that earlier. Okay, but at that time, I mean, we had industrial arts. And in fact, a very good program that I have to say that I benefited from greatly. And that's not something that's happening with, with kids today. It needs to happen. And, yeah. and, it and it won't look the way it did when you and I were in high school. Uh, well. Um, they don't make the same cars. You, you, you now use computer and CAD designs for a lot of stuff that we used to get just turn the screws and figure details out. Well, you um, still have to assemble it. I mean, you can have a, you can have a computer my, cut my, the piece, my but you point, still have to assemble my it. My point yeah. is that, that the kinds of jobs have changed. Mm -hmm. Technology has driven a lot of that. We agree 100% that young okay. people have to be introduced to different skills and opportunities in, in the world of work. Yes. Um, but we do have sort of a reality um, which is uh, the bell curve, okay? Not everyone is created equally, okay? There are uh, some people who are above average and some people are below average. For example, in the United States, it is illegal to induct anyone with an IQ of 84 or below into the military. Okay, you will do time in the stockade if you do that. That's 16% of the male population in the United States. What do we do with people like that? Hell if I know. I'm running for county commissioner. Okay, <laughs> good enough. So you brought up energy, um, and I was kind of curious about your experience with that. Uh, you talked about the uh, reduction in the storage space for um, energy by about a factor of 10. And um, yeah, I've sort of been involved in that for a while and tracking that. It seems like um, my question is, when you talk about energy storage and you got a tenth of space, what technology did you trans transition from and technology did you transition I'm to? I'm not a technology guy. We, we, we were financing okay. things that were commercially available. Right. The point being uh -huh. that technology has driven what's commercially available, so there's a lot more and it takes up a lot less room yes. than it used to. Mm -hmm. um, if you're asking about my background in energy, I'd be delighted to share it with you. Okay. Um, the reason I got into that, yep. just as an aside, very personal, mm -hmm. um, even though we had recently divorced, my first wife and I still loved one another and were co-parenting our children, mm -hmm. and she contracted non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and we lost her at a very young yeah. age. Um, I stayed home I, for over a year. I just I withdrew mm -hmm. from a lot of activity. Our, our youngest was very volatile, mm -hmm. and I, he needed to get through that. I even brought the two older ones, one of whom, by the way, is a veteran and yeah. had two tours of duty. You meant uh, one in South Korea and one in the Middle East. But I brought them all home and, and so they could forge relationships together before they began their lives without their mother. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get back into the education and training work I had done with, with, to really engage in the world again. Mm -hmm. And so I got involved in energy. Right. The way I got involved was a dear friend of mine, um, a guy named Charles Dalton, who used to be the weather, weatherization manager at EWEB. Mm -hmm. um, Charles Dalton and I, um, he was on the board of Oregon's only low-income ratepayer advocacy organization. Mm -hmm. Back then it was called Oregon Heat. Um, he knew I was good at what I did. Um, he, I, he introduced me to the board. I talked to the, them about you know, new models, more holistic models to deal with low-income ratepayers, i.e. poor people that mm -hmm. had to pay their heating bills. Long story short, developed a model for them, got it funded by the Meyer Memorial Trust. Um, it demonstrated uh, the cost effectiveness of a case management approach mm -hmm. to low-income ratepayers. Um, that led to 
my working with uh, a company that did analytics for a lot of the energy companies, mm -hmm. which led to my convincing the Energy Trust of Oregon, they had nothing for low-income ratepayers. They had to develop some programs for them. Yeah. They developed their first one. I managed it. It was my program. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was putting solar hot water on low-income housing across the state. Um, while I was doing, so I'm getting into my energy stuff. Right. While I was doing that, um, the Energy Trust of Oregon said they really needed to find a bank that would provide aggressive financial products from consumer to retail to distribution, all of the energy savings things mm -hmm. that they were trying to promote. Right. I did that for them. I, cr I brokered and created the relationship, the partnership between the Energy Trust of Oregon and Umqua Bank. Mm -hmm. Why Umqua Bank? because my dear friend that I worked with all the way back to the Lane Regional Workforce Quality Committee, Gary Pierpoint, who was with Umqua Bank, um, it was a dear friend. We talked to Ray Davis, who was mm -hmm. the chair of the board. You know, la-di-da, we developed this, this relationship. It still exists at all Umqua offices, by the way. The program mm -hmm. is called Green Street. And, um, and, and that was part of my background in energy. I was learning and learning, right? Because now I'm an older guy. I'm in my mid-50s. I'm mm -hmm. doing this stuff. Um, and I decided that, you know, one of the th I, I needed to make, I needed to go into business again. Um, uh, I did, by the way, I did, I did some stuff for Lane County and developed a $10 million commitment from Selco mm -hmm. to finance otherwise not credit worthy loans for residents with this new program I was setting up right. called Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing Pace. Yeah. Um, that was, do you remember the, the Leanne Richards wrongful oh, yeah. terminations, all that? That was in the middle of that. The guy I was, was working for reporting to um, was smeared so that it, he could be, they could justify firing him. Yeah. I submitted my report to the county and the new commissioners, the new co the crop that we've got now, but then they were new commissioners, mm -hmm. wouldn't even look at the report. Right. So I said, okay, fine. You know, you guys play politics. I'm going to do business. I took with the group I worked with to develop that report, mm -hmm. the key elements, yep. and we have created what is now over a billion dollar West Coast market for residential energy efficiency and solar. Mm -hmm. with this PACE financing. How much of it comes to Lane County? Zero. So that's a part of my background in energy. My company then became the largest PACE commercial and industrial developer in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then we did other things. So, which is the business. That's my last piece yeah. of, of record with energy is um, all Transactions are ultimately financial transactions, mm -hmm. so we got into creating new finance structures to underwrite solar energy efficiency, what have you. That, that is my background in this subject. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add to the energy thing? Probably that I forgot, but <laughs> that's all I got for you right now. Okay. Um, the next thing that I noted uh, during your, your sort of opening statements um, was this thing about preferences. Um, and we, so I'm, I'm sort of curious as to where that's going. Uh, what do you, um, I'm sorry, preferences? Yeah, in terms of hiring, that, uh, oh. go ahead. No, all I said was, when a large construction project is bound by a community benefits or a community mm -hmm. workforce agreement, yeah. which all of ours were, right. it, it, means a bu it triggers a bunch of things. Right. And one of the things is community hiring. And it, oh, I'm it, absolutely agreement, in agreement with hiring people locally. I'm just saying. Yeah, and but, so in Los so Angeles... So you get an argument there. Good. I don't want one. Yeah. <laughs> in, La, okay. in Southern California where we were doing it, right. a part of that is making sure that folks that historically don't have pathways to work in the building trades have them. And Agreed. it was just a matter of going out of our way to ensure that women, minorities, and veterans had those pathways. That's all. Right. Okay. That's what I was referring to. Yeah, because today, unfortunately, in a lot of places, it's come down to advertisements that are put out that say white males need not apply. And that, unfortunately, in the United States is A, against 
<laughs> against uh, the law, and B, it is occurring way too often. Are you feeling sorry for yourself that you're a white male? <laughs> uh, no, I'm simply looking at the fact that currently um, there's a much higher suicide and dropout rate among young men, and that, that's, that maybe the pendulum has swung a little bit far, and we should be uh, maybe looking at that problem a little bit closer. I totally agree. We should be looking at the problem closer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and totally the first, agree. The first step Don't is know to if simply, I agree with, yeah. The, the first step is to simply acknowledge that it exists. Well, you know, I absolutely agreed. And if I, can I kind of play right. off of that? Yeah. There are so many significant issues. Again, I'm not running for president. You know, some of these things we're talking about, I'm not running for a state office, but in the county commissioners, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think it's thrilling because this is where the rubber hits the road yeah. and there are so many issues. Health care, affordable housing, yep. living wages. There mm -hmm. are so many issues that if we don't look at them, right, and prioritize them and acknowledge them, we're not going to do anything about them. Right. And, and so I really agree with that point you made. Which is why I'm bringing this stuff up. Well, you're bringing it up because this is important to you. Okay. Well. I mean, really, if, if well, you... Well, someone, if someone is observing an issue which is not seeing uh, the kind of play that I think it should, should see... Absolutely. So you should it bring is, it up. You know, why are you running for uh, county already, commissioner? I've told you. So my motivation is very much the same as yours. Yeah, I know that. Saying that I find some issues that I would like to see some acknowledgement of. Totally agree. Okay. Yeah, totally agree. So Couldn't agree more, in fact, because a lot of these issues are being kept under the radar, like the citizen, right? C the, the citizen initiative. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, the citizen, they got some press on the citizen initiative. They've got a ton of press, but they've gotten no action right. from the county commissioners yeah. to, to put it on the ballot so citizens can decide if they agree or disagree. I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, I know. You know, this particular cadre of people is blocking the process. Exactly. And I would absolutely, you know, uh, so we basically have two, well, the current, the current commission is essentially a, a group of four against one. Correct. With Pete Sorensen being the one more, I will say, saner vote. I, I would agree with that. Okay. Um, so there are two positions up. So Three. Okay. Yeah, okay, you're right, absolutely. I, my, I misspoke. But that's no, fine. So if we can switch two of them, then that power, that power thing has been broken. That is correct. So... Um, so we do have, so that brings you to a, uh, a three to two. Correct. And I think that we will see some improvements in the county if that's broken. So that, that, uh, again, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. So you. I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm in favor of, of your, uh, victory over the incumbent. Um, could I speak to that? Yeah, go for it. So. There are, th as you said, there are three of the five commissioners are up for re-election. Correct. Yeah. All of them are running for re-election. Well, one my, was appointed. Well, but recently. all of the three incumbents right. are running for yes. Mm -hmm. So the my race in Springfield is a fascinating race. Mm -hmm. It will be decided in three weeks. Yeah. May fifteenth, because we only have two people, yep. the incumbent, Mr. Lichen, and myself could not be more different. Um, and let, let's say that, that I win. Let's just that scenario. Yep. Joe Bernie is the commissioner from Springfield. Mm -hmm. Then Joe Bernie will, with the wind at his back, because it, the p conventional political wisdom is that Lycan is not re displaceable. Right. So there will be wind at our back, and we will then campaign to ensure that we flip the district. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, and there is actually, I learned a group called Flip Lane County yep. that that is out there, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people would like to see county government once again represent regular people, as opposed to wealthy donor interests. And here's what's yep. interesting about that, mm -hmm. and I know we agree, so forgive me. I'm not yeah, doing it. It's okay. Um, my background is a working class background, mm -hmm. Springfield is a working class community that's right. proud and has a strong work ethic. Yes, it does. My opponent comes from a wealthy family, mm -hmm. never had to work a day in his life, et cetera. We're very different in, in, in our backgrounds. Um, we're different in our experience. Mm -hmm. My experience is in 
the real world in education and business and being successful. Two of the businesses I started are still operating to this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One for over 30 years. Um, so when you align real, Springfield work ethic, service ethic, community ethic values, really this shouldn't be a race. But we have the power of incumbency and the power of marketing and advertising and branding and running for office all the time. So that's okay. That's what I'm up against. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a political reality and it's not unique to here. No, but, um, but this is an interesting time. Yes, it is a very interesting time. Okay. Um, so you brought up the issue of, well, you brought up an, Two more things, we'll skip those. Um, solving problems versus ideology. Yes. Okay, let's discuss the whole concept of critical thinking and problem solving. Yes, which ought to be happening in schools. <laughs> yes, it should. Absolutely. And, and the question is, why is it not? Yeah, I know. And, and how do we get it to? But that's, again, another question. And, and, I, and I think that there's a, another one, which is, you know, you did bring up this concept of purpose and motivation. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I taught part-time at A3 for a while. Oh, did you? Okay. Um, I met Mike Fisher back uh, 11 years ago and mentioned that I did 3D animation. And oh, so that's he, very cool. So One he, of the businesses I helped start, yeah. a, a bunch of young people that had mm -hmm. dropped out, um, is a Big City Gaming, which is still going on. But anyway, sorry to interrupt you. The, um, yeah, the thing is, so I wound up um, teaching there. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the issue was, uh, and it wasn't unique to, because A3, the way, the way the school worked is in the morning you did your academic classes, in the afternoon you did your art classes. And um, there were a few students who, you know, actually did something. Most of them didn't, okay. um, in the sense that you'd have them in class and, and, you know, they'd rather sit around talking with their friends and than doing anything else. And mm -hmm. it sort of seemed like, um, why am I wasting my time um, after a while? And I've also made an attempt a couple times. Uh, the school here, for example, does not have video classes, which is truly a travesty. We have all of these toys right. sitting here right. in this place that used to be a wood shop. Right. Um, so you don't have industrial arts and you don't have video classes. Right. And even if you try to get a group of students together, um, there generally is not a commitment to actually do anything. It's like you get a group of students in there, and it's like, okay, well, you want to make a film, you need a script. Okay, so that means you have to actually sit down and write a script. Mm -hmm. So what do you need to do in order to write your script? And um, there's, you know, it's like, well, we're just here to kind of play. Oh, okay, so you're not going to produce anything. So my question is, how do we get past um, these kinds of issues, um, solving, you know, so let's use that maybe as a framework to talk about problem solving uh, versus kind of ideology and see what that is. I, I apologize. I followed you, but I didn't get the question. I'm sorry. Didn't get the question. Okay. How do we motivate young people to actually get involved? To do real things. To do real things. For example, <laughs> earlier in this conversation, uh, we discussed very briefly the yeah. fact that there are all of these uncontested races going on. Right. How do we actually get people okay, to I gotcha. get involved in the political system, I gotcha. to make a short film, to learn a skill, to do something, to actually stop just sitting around doing nothing? Gotcha. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I think I'd be richer than rich if I really truly had the answer that could be bottled. Well, I'm looking, for, I'm but looking for good suggestions. Well, okay. Um, first off, in, a per, in my perfect world, you would have students forming teams and tackling issues incrementally mm -hmm. in their community, whether it was helping elderly people maintain their yards, mm -hmm. whether it was, you know, organizing um, some service for mm -hmm. for those that don't that are not computer literate or don't have access to technology, whatever it happened to be, mm -hmm. so that they got academic credit for part of their day being in the community, doing real things that actually solved real problems and helped real people. 
towards that, towards, again, the context is too. What's, what we ought to be developing are young people and everyone with a work ethic, a service ethic, and a citizenship ethic. Agreed. How and, do we do that? Well, I, I yeah. just gave you a general example. I've done it myself many times in different ways. So that was part of our, our school to work structure, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, if I may, here's an interesting point that to me, when we structured school to work 26, 25 years ago in Lane County, mm -hmm. I did something very different. I contracted out with community groups. I gave them dollars to generate mentors for kids, mm -hmm. on the job shadowing for kids, work experiences for kids, mm -hmm. coming into the classrooms and talking, adopting schools, you know, all of this stuff. It was all organized to create relationships between people mm -hmm. so that a working adults cared about what was happening with kids. Mm -hmm. um, all of that, re, re, you don't develop a service ethic without developing a work ethic. They're interrelated. Without mm -hmm. developing very a much, Very much, very much so. And our, one of the great enemies of all that right now, I think, mm -hmm. is a combination of apathy and distraction. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and we, we have to compete with apathy and distractions, including the telephone, social media. Yeah. And what are we competing for? We're competing for their attention. Yep. And how do you get their attention? By giving them a stronger sense of meaning, that, that whatever you're doing is more meaningful to them. Yep. They get a better sense of competence. They feel like they're part of a group and they can see there's a relationship between what they're doing and creating a better life for themselves. So that's the lens through which I approach, I think, the issue that you just presented. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if I may, go ahead. it brings up another issue. Right now, and, and your viewers, I, maybe they know this, but right now, I didn't until I got in here and studied it, Lane County invests in between three month and three year investment instruments mm -hmm. about a quarter billion dollars a year of our tax money. Yeah. Not a quarter billion a year. At any given point there's about a quarter billion in investments. Those investments, I question where they go. They don't come to Lane County to, to, re, to, to multiply dollars for local people and yeah. increasing the tide for everyone. But without even getting into that, they don't earn much of an interest rate. All told, it averages to be about 1%, which no. is, to me, pitiful. But let's even accept that. What does the county do with that 1%, let's call it 2 and a half to 3 million a year? It uses it to backfill its own budget. Yeah. My point is, hey, it's not your money. It's the citizens' money. Yeah. And so let's just take that 2 and a half million and use it as seed money to do the very things we're talking about. Okay, we have two pieces of that. So, number one, I think that that's the suggestion on the return on the investment is... Well, that's is, a whole different one, yeah. Yeah, in other words, you've got, you've got this uh, return, but you also have the investment itself. And the Correct. question is, why is the investment not incurring within the district? Why are yep. we spending our money investing in things outside of the district rather than, than creating the kinds of things in the district Can that I are go, going to give us a, a sustainable future. That's 100% correct. Yeah. I'm even going to go further. One, how come we don't even know about this? How come commissioners aren't going out and talking to people about this subject? Yeah. Number two, yes, why are we investing in Wall Street instead of Main Street yeah. where, where we can create a sustainable You've future? You've been listening to Bernie and Trump. Well, so. my last name is Bernie. Yeah. I've been, I've, I don't need to listen to him. I'm, we're 64 years old. We don't need, you know, we've got our, we know what life is about. Yeah, right. um, so, so you're absolutely right. And, and I don't need to know why not. I, 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 we'll hear a hundred reasons why not. Yeah. That's what our current county commissioners are real good at. They're good at explaining why they can't do things. And as I, oh, sa yeah. and as I said to them when I, when I addressed them and announced that I was running, mm -hmm. I said, I don't, in my businesses, hire people that tell me I can't do things. Mm -hmm. I hire people that can figure out 
how to do them, and then implement. Right. So as it relates to this, yeah, there, we will hear reasons, but ultimately it relates to state guidelines and county guidelines, and if there's mm -hmm. county guidelines that, needed to be, that need to be changed so we can invest our money and ourselves, that's what I'm running for. Okay. You know, a lot of this stuff comes down to people actually doing something, whether it's running for office, which is, I'm, you know, just, just the fact that you're doing this makes you my hero. Well, that's kind of, yeah. So, you know, too few people. There are way too many uncontested races. There are far too, pe too few people getting out there to actually do the work. And it is work to run for office. <laughs> it's um, a pain in the butt. <laughs> let's, that's putting it mildly. Yeah. It is, you know, when I ran for office, yeah. I knocked on 8,000 doors. That's every, that's every day for months By the way, coming out and doing that. I, I have wonderful volunteers, and yeah. I have not knocked on all these doors. I've knocked on a lot of doors. Yeah. We have knocked on over 10,000 doors so far. Yeah. It's insane. But you know what? That's, that's as you know, that's where democracy happens. It that's is. where community engagement happens. And my opponent has stated in the Register Guard, which endorsed me, by the way, yeah. my opponent has stated he's not doing that. Yeah. He's putting up billboards, he's having lots of ads, and people can come and talk to him at his office. Uh, that's not my style. Well, that gives you an advantage, doesn't it? Um, I'm very bullish on my, on my chances of winning. Well, I, I certainly hope so. But that's, thank you so kindly. I am, um, uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be good to break the current power block and change the county commission. So I hope all three seats switch. <laughs> but I'll take two. You'll take two. Two is good. Two. <laughs> I agree. So. And, and thank you. I hope I wasn't, I hope you didn't mind. I just, I just did, it's the exchange of ideas, which yeah. I think, again, is wonderful, and we have mm -hmm. far too little of it. Yeah. So we've got about a minute and a half left. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, I assume you have a website? I do. That people can contact you and, and get involved? And www.joeberney, J-O-E-B-E-R-N-E-Y.com. Yes, right. sir. Okay. And um, let's see. So, yeah, your campaign is, is active and doing this thing, and, and you've got a manageable district in terms of I size. Do. And, okay. and in terms of the length of time for this campaign. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, some, some of the rural areas are a lot tougher to, yes. to reach with individual, what people call retail politics. Right. Um, right. And so, yeah, keep doing it. Well, and I'm blessed because my support system includes my wife, her, our three children, my, our three children, all of whom are here, yeah. and my, our two grandchildren. So I have to do this, right. but I don't have to do this after this. So if I, this will be my first and last, right? County commissioner in oh, terms I of policy. I, well, I, I think I will Joe be Bernie 69. for president in a couple of years. Yeah. I'll, 20, be, 20, I'll be 69. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to say was, um, my opponent is constantly running for higher office, yeah. which means he's constantly setting up exploratory committees, exploring, raising money, which is taking him away oh. from the job of just serving the constituents in the direction of Lane County. And that's all I'm going to be focusing on. Yeah, it, would be, it would be nice to have a full-time commissioner. Yes. <laughs> and I, th I thank you very much for the conversation. Hey, Joe, it's I've, great to I've meet you. I enjoyed it. And Best wishes on your candidacy, and we will see all of you folks at the next interview.